Hello there, welcome back to the channel, my name's Alan and I'm making a tactics game. It's been a while, I haven't done an update in quite a bit, but I have been working. This is going to be another kind of rambly devlog like the last one I did. I have been a bit of a bad YouTuber, I haven't been recording my progress on making stuff. So everything you're about to see in this video is kind of my daily updates that I put into our Discord. Every time I do any kind of work, I pretty much always post it in the Discord somewhere. So if you want to see them live as they go up, join the Discord. And you get to see everyone else's great games as well. And there is a lot of really cool stuff getting posted there almost every day. And it's really great to see. So first plug in, get on the Discord. I highly encourage it. Let's jump into what I've been doing over the last few months, starting with map design. When we finished up uh, in the last devlog, I was focused all on character design and trying to get good at pixel art. But I was starting to feel a bit burnt out on it, so I thought I would take some time to look into my map design and my map art. And it started pretty bad. This is where I was in the very beginning. So I kind of don't even know what I want. This, These are just a bunch of assets and I have this map generator and I'm, I'm just trying to play around with it and figure out what is what I want. And I probably spent way too long on it, but I just gave up and, and, and really thought about what I wanted to do. At one stage, I thought I'll maybe try and stick a train over my map, and then I could have like nice foliage, like grass everywhere and stuff like that. And it, I, I didn't like how it looked at all. I didn't probably spend long enough to try and make it look nice, but I just didn't like it. And then I had this problem where the overlay was underneath the grass, and I just didn't want to fix it. So I started pretty bad when it comes to the map stuff. I was just aimless, I just didn't know what I wanted. And then I had all these trees in my way, so I needed to find like a way of seeing through the trees. I tried learning about see-through shaders and it was I couldn't figure out how to do it with a, a 3D object and I found a tutorial on a 2D object, so I, I did one with 2D. And even with 2D, I, like, I, didn't, I didn't like it, I didn't think it looked very nice. And I didn't, it didn't add a lot to my environment. So I thought, what if all of like the interesting things about the area is outside of the map? And then I can worry about what happens inside the map later on. So I did this like this one scene where to try and make the characters like they're in a forest. And I'm trying to figure out like what level of density I can have without it getting in the way. And I didn't like this either too much either. It just, it just, I don't know, it just, it was just messy. It didn't have the feeling that I wanted it to have. Then things really started to take shape when I discovered a, a tool called Blockbench. Bench. So Blockbench is like, it was originally for Minecraft, but it's basically just for making blocks, really simple 3D models, and you can do them really quickly, And but, but you're very limited on the amount of detail you can put into the objects, which I thought was fine because I only want blocky things in my game anyway. So I played around with that and I started making this environment here. So every, all the models in this scene I made in Blockbench. And then I'm using a tune shader that I got from an asset pack that I've had for a long time. I just plugged it in to see what it looked like and I thought it looked really good. So throughout all of my experiments, I'm constantly tweaking that, trying to find like the value that I really like. But the scene is starting to take shape. I what I want is, what I want is a, I want it to look like you're in like the training area of a village and you're some like training soldiers. This is like, I wanted this to look like, kind of like the starting area of a game that I want to make. So that's what I'm kind of experimenting with. Yeah. The block bench was starting to be a little bit of a limiting factor. I need to put time in to get good at modeling. Yeah. The limits of block bench were kind of starting to frustrate me a little bit. And everything was taking so long, I started looking into some other assets that I had. Here's a nice windmill and, and a well that I made. Or not that I made, that I got from an asset. And I stuck that into the level just to see what it looked like with the toon shader. And I thought it looked pretty good. I like the, the windmill. I think the windmill is a really nice touch. So I stuck that in the scene and someone on Discord was talking about the kind of checkered pattern on a game that they really like, which I'm completely forgetting about. Someone comment below if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, like, Doofus, Doofus. Doofus is the game. That's the game I'm thinking about. They have a checker pattern on their, on their map, and I thought, oh, that looks kind of cool. So I added it into mine, and so now I have a checker pattern on my map, which I really like. I think it adds a little bit of something to the, to an otherwise completely blank and, and, and spaceless map. I played around with sizes a little bit as well, and I, right now my map is, my arena is 8x8. The reason I chose 8x8 is because I, I want my battles to be really quick and succinct, so 
I want the map. I want them to be the map to be fairly the arena to be fairly small, basically. So I'm leaving it that for now to experiment with. Maybe I'll make it bigger in the future. I don't know. I'll think about it. This pro based on the level, it's probably going to get bigger depending on the level you're in. I don't know. That's way way into the future. But this is where the level looks at the minute, and I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely not done, obviously, but you know I'm going in the right direction. Oh, and before I move on from the level stuff. A big inspiration of this environment outside of my arena is I was playing Banner Saga, right, which is a really old isometric tone based game. And it's brilliant, it's really good, I love it. And its maps are very limited, but the outside of the maps are all, they have a lot going on, they're all the, and they're beautiful. So I thought I could maybe tell a lot of my environment stuff from the outside of a map, because I think that's something that people don't really think about, is what goes on the outside. Um, so that's my idea for now is that my arenas will be fairly basic and small but the outside of the arenas might have like some stuff going on that kind of tells you the player where they are and that's my idea for now we'll see how it goes once i get into way deeper into level design but again very far down the road so i'm not too worried about it since i started to feel pretty good about my where the levels were going, I decided to go back to character art and I made a very basic character with a very basic idle animation. And then I gave him a couple of different weapon types. So this guy is going to be the base for at least three classes, right? He's going to be a warrior, an archer, and a mage. And I'm going to be able to skin on top of this my actual characters when it comes down to that. So I did that front and back, and then I stuck him into the game. I stuck him into the game and I started working on making sure the rotation of the character was correct. Um, I talked this in the last dev vlog, how to do it, how I'm doing the rotation. So have a look, try and find that section if you don't know. I'm using something called a blend tree in the animator. Um, so you can Google about that. But yeah, that took a little while to get it working right. In the beginning it was a bit buggy and then I got it working with the attacks. So in the beginning it was just, they were rotating as they moved, now they rotate based on who they're targeting and who they're trying to attack and it, it actually feels so good to have characters moving and looking at each other and stuff like that just this tiny thing makes it feel so much realer and i'm i really felt good about this point but then it went bad because i started working on an attack animation so i got my warrior guy i kind of did this very rough blurry version of the attack and then i got my sprite to do the attack and i think it looks really good i think i was really happy with how it looks but where it went wrong was when I tried to implement it into the game. So what happens is when my character attacks, because of the way the special effects are, the bottom of the character increases, right? So the bottom size of the character increases, making the character sprite go down into the ground and clip, clip with the ground. And, it, and obviously that's not what you want. And it completely ruins the illusion that this is a character in this space because it's a sprite in a 3D world and it breaks everything. So I spent a long time trying to fix this. I, I tried rotating the character so it faces the character a bit more and then lifting it off the ground. So the character would be, would, from the perspective of the camera, it would be the character would be on the ground. But in reality, the character is like, you know, far away from the ground to give it space for the attacks to work which in a blank map doesn't look too bad, but there's a possibility that the character will clip through objects then that are in, in front of where it's supposed to be, like this fence. It can clip through this fence and it just looked terrible. So I had to go to the drawing board and figure out what I was going to do. And after like two weeks of trying things, eventually I came up with this idea of what if the special effects of the attack were in 3D space? So one evening, I quickly, I drew this very rough slashing animation. I attached it to my character, put it at an angle, and I just played it. And instantly I was like, oh, this is the way to go. This looks great, I think. Well, it looks better. It didn't look great at this stage, but it looks better. And so what I'm deciding to do is this is going to be my next devlog is how I am going to make this combo system. So what I did next was I got this little slashing animation. I stuck it to like a random object, this block, and I put six of them, one in each corner of the block, right? And different rotations. So I'm gonna have a, you know, top going down, a mid strike and bottom coming up, right? And then I just have all those animations trigger each other 
while the block rotates and plays them all. And I think this looks great. So if you imagine a character doing like a flurry of attacks, these effects would be playing as that character's doing a flurry of attacks. And then I thought, all right, well, what if I kind of have like a distinct list of animations? Like I had a script, I made a scriptable object that I attached to list, a list of animations to. So then I could have like different commands. So here is a character rotating and just an object rotating. And I'm playing different combos, right? So in my head now, I'm imagining a special attack that a character can play that might be like some kind of one, two slash. And I can now just attach one of these scriptable objects to that one, two slash and just play it. That's not implemented yet, but that's what the next develop is going to be. And I think I'm pretty excited about this one bit after being stuck on it for so long. So do subscribe and come check out the next video when I have that done. Hopefully it won't take too long. And that's where the project is right now. So yeah, that was a bit rambly. I apologize. Hopefully I get back to making kind of nice scripted devlogs, um, trying to find a nice mix of, you know, I want to make a good video, but I also just don't have that much free time. I don't want the videos to impact the game development. Uh, so it's tough. It's tough to find a nice, a nice balance. And now, but there is, I'm not done yet. There is one little bonus section I wanted to talk about is that I entered a game jam. I can't remember the name of the game jam, but it was a pretty big one. And it was a two week long game jam. Normally I never even think about doing game jams because this was two weeks long. I thought maybe I could make a game and a bunch of the guys in Discord were, make, were entering, so I was like, why not? I'll enter it. I spent two weeks in on a game jam, and lo and behold, I did not finish. It wasn't. It didn't even become a game. So that's why this isn't, it isn't going to be its own video. But basically, what I did was, I wanted to make an automation game. Rimworld is a, a secret little love of mine. Every, one, every couple of months, I launch Rimworld, and I'll, 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 I'll play it once, and then I'll never play it again. <laughs> but I really enjoy automation games. It just it tickled something in me. So my game idea was to make a an automation game where these walkers are making monsters, and you're selling those monsters to like cartoon villains for money, and then you're you're upgrading your factory, and you know you know that kind of generic loop. Obviously, in massively out of scope for what I wanted to do uh, for the time I had to do it. So I completely messed up. But this is where the game ended up at. It's not a game, you press play, and you have these walkers. They look for a job, they go complete the job until they get tired, and then they go sleep, and then they find another job, and then rinse and repeat. So no gameplay, and it's pretty limited, but instead of letting this just get deleted, I stuck it in a repo, uh, and it's down below in the description. So if anybody has any interest in making an automation game, this might be somewhere for you to start. Uh, Obviously, it's for a game jam, so it's the code is all pretty rough, but you know, it might be a starting point for someone. So, if you want it, it's there for grabs, it's up for grabs, and it's all yours. But that's it, that's it, that's it for this video. Hopefully, the next video will be like a proper devlog and not just me rambling like this at you. But I wanted to do an update because it's been a while since I've talked to you guys, and I want you to know I am still working on the project, even though um, I'm not posting an awful lot. That's it. Thank you so much. Please do like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. And I will see you again next time. Thanks, guys. Cheers.